welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today we will be drawing Ultron, the Avengers movie villain. Of course, in this case, uh, we're drawing the uh, villain's head at the moment. So this is Ultron's head. I've decided to draw classic Ultron because I really like uh, classic Ultron's look, as opposed to the new villain coming out in, uh, in May, where uh, they've redesigned him and he looks a bit more... Uh, organic, more human-like. I really like the classic Ultron. It looks like he's built in a metal armor. Um, so this is Ultron's head, sort of like a, a motorcycle helmet with uh, an open mouth. And of course, he'll be sitting on his throne today. Back in the day, when I used to read comic books, Ultron used to be able to float on a, on a throne and he had like a, a motorcycle grips and so on, so he can float around and whatnot. And so his right shoulder here will be connected to his arm, which will be connected to one of those grips. His left shoulder here, uh, which we are drawing the shoulder pads to, will be connected to his arm, connected to his forearm, holding something in his hand. Now that's something, I will not tell you what it is until we get to the drawing that point, that, that uh, point in time that we're going to be drawing that head of ours. And I'm not going to say, oh, I said head. So it's going to be, <laughs> oh, yeah, I got myself. So Ultron will be holding someone's head, but I won't say who's yet. So we'll have to figure that out. You may have seen it at the beginning in the intro. Uh, maybe you didn't pay attention. Don't go see it. You know, keep it a suspense. Let's keep going here. So I'll erase the foundation lines to this drawing and then keep going along. So this is the uh, jawline to Ultron here. I really can't wait to see that movie coming out in uh, May of 2015. I think it'll be one of those blockbuster movies again. Marvel is coming out with some really great movies. And then just recently I just saw the Star Wars Episode 7 preview that I'm quite excited to see. Um, the first movie I ever saw at the theater was Star Wars Episode 4. You know, so back in 1977. I was uh, 8 years old and it was the first time I had ever been to... No, wait a minute. I was six years old and I'd never been to the theater before and so that was really really cool so that's part of my uh, my history there sorry to you know bum you out with my history so here's uh, one of Ultron's eyes and Ultron at the front this classic Ultron has these sort of rectangular teeth so we're gonna add those in and then as we come up here we have to imagine that we can see his left eye here just a little bit we have a what we call a foreshortened headshot here or a three-quarter headshot so we can actually see sort of the front and the side a little bit and then he has these little scales on, on the front of his head um, so sort of like an armadillo back we'll put that in there and then of course there are these uh, separators dividers so like I said the armadillo shaped scales and all these are welded together, or bolted together, I'm not too sure. If I'm not mistaken, I think that uh, Iron Man, or Tony Stark, is the person that, uh, that built Ultron. But I might be mistaken about that. And if I am, please leave me a few comments here on my YouTube channel. Or you can always send me an email via my Facebook page, Drawing with Paolo. You can come and check that out. We share a lot of our drawings there. And when I mean our drawings, I mean yours. So if ever you want to share your drawing of Ultron, the one that you've produced while watching this video, Go ahead and send it off to me at Drawing with Paolo on Facebook. All right, so Ultron has these a uh, very muscular neck, but his muscles are all made of these like metallic tubes, and uh, sort of like imagine C-3PO, you know, C-3PO's torso, the the his midsection is all all these kind of tubes and wiring too. So uh, Ultron is the same thing there in his neck, but it's all like uh, muscle in a sense. So probably like. Um, motors and rotors in there. He has this little detail here along his uh, traps. Trapezius muscles on either side should be the same. And then he's got these lines going across like this. Now I get a lot of questions about my drawings. Paolo, do you use a model when you draw? And uh, is, it, is it right to use a model? Am I copying? Is it, is it cheating? Um, those are all great questions. And no, it's not cheating. So the idea here is you always want to run a bit of research on the character you're going to be drawing or the animal you're going to be drawing so that you can draw it well. If you get used to drawing the same character over and over again, then you probably don't need a, a, an image to help you out. But in the beginning, you always need to, to use a, in my opinion anyway, you always need to use a sample image or at least a few images 
uh, to concoct your drawing, to build it up together. Now, like professionals, comic book professionals, will use uh, the random, uh, let's say, uh, sports picture and uh, real human poses and people at the mall or whatever else to reproduce um, their illustration or to help in producing their illustration in comic books. So, you know, why not do the same thing? You should uh, always use real life content to reproduce that in your drawing. So sit down in front of a chair, sit down in front of your car, sit down in front of a table or, or, or door and draw what you see. And of course that becomes the model to your drawing. And it's only normal to have to use models at the beginning. And I say that as I'm drawing the Saltron. So what I did before drawing the Saltron is I went online and looked up a whole bunch of images and, and found a few that I liked and I have them posted up on my computer screen that you can't see at the moment. And uh, I'm using that as reference to drawing this, uh, this Ultron character here. Because I wouldn't be able to remember all these details uh, from the top of my head. Sort of like his forearm here. Forearm, the sh basic shape is easy. I could draw that by hand and by memory. But the idea is how does this shape work? Is this how the shape works in Ultron? Is this like a vase shape for the, the Ultron classic? I, I don't know. And how do I know that this little piece comes out jotting out this way and then this other part attaches to it that way? I wouldn't know unless I had the images for it. So feel free to look up online for these, uh, I guess they're, they're, it's like a support piece, something to help you out in better rendering your drawing. All right, let's get this little piece out of there and erase all the foundation lines that we no longer need. And by the way, no, I do not really erase with my hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I know a lot of people ask me that question too. Uh, it's all done in, editing. So after I film all this stuff, I go into editing and I, when I swipe my hand, I really just remove the boring parts where I'm erasing the, the drawing. So um, it makes it a bit shorter video if I don't show you how to erase, which is quite boring to watch, I think. All right, so we're going to work on his hand here. This is the hand that we be, will be holding somebody's head. And essentially they're just four sausages right? This is the basic foundation to the fingers, our sausage shapes that are slightly bent and uh, each individual uh, sausage has these rectangular curved pieces to it and so uh, that way they look like fingers. And so we're just going to keep working on these a little bit. Now I'm sorry that my hand is in the way here. You should be able to see the design there. Whoop, there we go. Oh, hang on a sec. So you'll get a bit more uh, view here coming up shortly. And I'm just going to add a few more details to his armored piece here. Give his uh, knuckles here a little go. And then these like tendon lines coming down from the center. And he's got this circular thing on the back of his hand. I guess he can shoot beams from there or lasers or something. A little uh, divot here. Maybe where his armored parts attached together. In the new movie, it would appear that uh, one of the Ultron uh, bodies comes from an Iron Man costume or a portion of an Iron Man costume. So that's pretty exciting. I can't wait to see that. In this case, this classic Ultron, I'm not sure what he was built from. So here's his uh, right arm, which will be uh, reaching out to uh, one of those um, motorcycle handles. Futuristic looking motorcycle handles. So his forearm will be sort of towards us. A little bit so four shortened and we will finish off the elbow part here um, let's work a little bit more on this face here so I'm going to retrace the outline and what's important of course when you're laying your foundation lines your basic lines to reproducing your to producing your drawing you need to make sure to keep your pencil very light if you apply too much pressure then it's very difficult to erase that content later on so when I'm drawing my basic shape in the first place, I'm really applying very, very light pressure to my uh, pencil. That way I can erase it if ever I make a mistake. And later on then I'll retrace on top as I, I, I'm doing now to make sure that I can actually uh, make it nice and dark and visible and finish it off nicely that way. All right, so we're gonna add a few more lines here to his teeth is uh, chin and jawline and then add the thickness inside there behind his jaw so the inside of his mouth and a little bit of a thickness line here 
his lat muscle, uh, yeah, his latimus dorsi, and these are the oblique muscles, which are not really muscles, I guess, if we're talking about a robot, they're like sculpted pieces. And then he's got this like detailed line coming across this way, the same thing on the other side. And then uh, they sort of finish up a circle in the middle of these things, sort of like Iron Man's armor to a certain extent. And then this has a thickness like that. There you go. I'd like to, uh, by the way, thank everybody that's been watching my videos. I have uh, more than 50,000 subscribers now on my YouTube channel. Thank you for that. I've got more than 11 million views. That is fantastic. And I'm really, really uh, proud uh, to produce these videos for you and help you out with uh, these drawings. Um, and I'd like to therefore thank everyone watching uh, in these specific countries of France where a lot of my fans are out there. Uh, Quebec, Canada, Canada, the US, uh, the island of Reunion, uh, Africa, and Morocco, and you know, uh, Brazil, and Spain, and uh, Switzerland, I'd like to say hi to all of you. Thank you very much. Italy, you know, I've, I know I'm forgetting some, but uh, I really, really appreciate you guys watching on a weekly basis or monthly basis. And thank you for your patience with these videos coming up. I've been uh, taking my time uh, recently as I've taken on a new job, so I don't have as much time to draw anymore. So, but I really appreciate your patience and sticking there with me and going through my more than 175 videos uh, of all these really cool drawings. So thank you, thank you, thank you for having followed me since 2010. So we're gonna start shading certain portions of this Ultron character and he's made of metal. So in the past, if you have been following me since the beginning, we've drawn a few characters that are made of metal such as uh, the knight in shining armor, we've drawn the terminator and uh, even the alien to a certain extent has these reflective surfaces and that's what we want to do here with uh, Ultron. And the trick to reproducing that metal texture is reflections, highlights, and gradients. So as you can see here, this bottom part of his head is much darker and the far back left side is darker. And as it comes towards us, it gets lighter and lighter. And I definitely want to make sure to leave like white highlights within this coloring process. So as I color a line, I want to skip a line leave a little bit of white and add another darker line. So sort of like chrome. And in the idea of uh, learning how to draw chrome or metallic um, textures, sit down in front of a doorknob, for example, or in front of the wheels of your parents' car or your own car, and look at the reflections that are in there and try to reproduce those with your pencil. And then you can go in with an eraser, as I just did, and, and make the little highlights appear inside there. And it makes it really, really realistic. So we're gonna keep feathering in our, our layers of um, graphite here and, and use our eraser to erase some of this stuff. So I'm going to retrace now those neck muscles, make them a lot darker, and use that same shading technique of the gradient effect to make it look like uh, a metal reflective surface, metallic reflective surface. All right, so draw along here, add this neckline, and of course retrace this trapezius design here, just like that. Um, furthermore, I'm going to be uh, smudging this drawing with my palm quite a bit. As you can see, as I'm coloring in this shape here, I will be smudging my drawing. And that's okay, I want that to happen. It'll give it a nicer, softer look. And later on, when I come back with my eraser, I'll be able to make some really nice white highlights, thanks to that. And so, here for the reflections on the shoulder part, or the shoulder pad, I draw in a shape and then fill that in. So this circular shape, fill that in with a sort of gradient effect. And gradient essentially means going from a dark color to a lighter color in one smooth motion. And so I'm gonna make this effect also uh, in a circular pattern so that it really looks that it is a rounded shoulder pad. It wouldn't make any sense to make that flat. I guess one of our goals as artists are to make our drawings look 3D, three-dimensional, and to pop off the page. If, they, if you have the sense that it does pop off the page, that the drawing is not flat, then you've succeeded to a certain degree, if that's the type of drawing you want to make. Um, so by adding really dark shades and really white sections to the drawing, 
then you do get that 3D effect. And so in this section here of the shoulder pad, I want to render that chrome look. And a little bit here onto the bicep, I want to create that gradient effect. So I'll pull down a few lines and then color the rest in like this. I've accelerated this, the uh, coloring in portions uh, because I, I suspect this would be like a two hour video. I think it took me about two hours to, to color in this guy fully or, or do the whole drawing. So instead, if you think I'm going too quickly, please use your YouTube controls to pause, rewind, fast forward this drawing if you need to. I always recommend you watch it once and watch it again. So watch it once fully, get a better understanding with the drawing, where it goes and all that, and then watch it again and draw at the same time. That's the purpose of these videos, so that you can draw and try to reproduce what I do. Some of you may think that this drawing is very complex for you if it's your first time. Therefore, go to my YouTube channel, Drawing with Paolo, where you can click on my name, Paolo Moroni, and you'll see that I have uh, many basic drawings in there too. Pokemon and uh, jack-o'-lanterns and swords and things of that nature, and they're easier to draw, so you can try those ones out to begin with. 3D shapes and 3D letters could be a really good way to practice beforehand. But nothing can beat practice, patience, and perseverance when you're drawing. Uh, nothing happens all of a sudden. Yes, some of us have uh, a, an ease at drawing. You know, we, we are somehow skilled. We don't know why we are, but we just have a, uh, an easier time with it. But I'm pretty certain that everyone can learn how to draw. You just need to work at it and not dis get discouraged and keep at it and keep those failed drawings. Don't throw them out. Keep them onto the side and keep looking at them once in a while and tell yourself you can do it better next time. And that's how you get to, to practice, just like riding a bike. You know, what would happen if you fell off that bike once and then never, never got back on there again? Well, you wouldn't be riding a bike today. So the same thing with drawing. Don't get discouraged. Keep working at it and you'll get there eventually. All right, so we're going to make certain of these parts darker. And notice that I'm layering graphite. I'm going back frequently to add darker shades and darker shades and darker shades. And that's essentially, you know, I'm going where the eye wants me to go. And I sort of look at the drawing and figure out that this portion should be darker and this portion should be lighter. And well, you can't necessarily make it lighter, but that's why you go a few times over these parts here. And now I'm going to draw in sort of like the tendons to the back of the hand. If you uh, look at your hand palm down and pull on your fingers, pull your fingers up, um, you'll see the tendons raise, and that's what I'm sort of drawing on the back of this hand here. I don't surmise that Ultron has tendons, but uh, I can imagine that you know it's a nice element to this drawing that I want to add in there. So I'm going to color in the fingers here, nice and dark. Imagining that the light sort of comes from the top and behind uh, Ultron. You have to say that Ultron in this uh, version has um, emanating light from the inside of his body. So like inside of his head, everything is, is illuminated, it's sort of like a jack-o'-lantern. So who knows, maybe that's producing light on, on his body and, and shading the back of his hand. I'm going to add a few more lines here to this antenna. And then we're going to add a nice drop shadow here, cast shadow from his head to his body. Color that in. That's a nice drop shadow or cast shadow, I should say. And you may notice that now my paper is starting to get dirty. And that's I like that idea. I want my paper to be dirty so that later on I can erase some nice highlights on this character later on. Make this a little bit darker to push that back a little bit. And add a nice little light reflection over here, drawing that shape and then color around it. Just like this. So I get a lot of requests. I get a lot of requests. I'm not taking requests at the moment, sorry to say, but I just need to finish a bunch of these drawings that have been asked of me since 2011. Imagine that uh, for a long time now. And these requests are always about characters. Can you draw so-and-so, or can you draw this and that? Um, because I want to learn how to draw it. Well, you know what, I can, definitely. But any one of these characters are based in the basic principles of drawing a human body. 
So if you learn about the basic principles of drawing a human body, or drawing in the way that, let's say, I've, I've been showing you for the past four years, uh, close to five years now, in October will be five years, October 2015, then you should apply those basic principles or fundamentals to every one of your drawings. It's not because I draw Superman that you only know how to draw Superman. If I draw Superman in a pose, you could replace that Superman by the Flash, by Wonder Woman, by a soccer player, by uh, a little girl. Of course, things change between them. The, the proportions and body size and body parts are different, but the posing is the same and the, the basic ratios are the same. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to understand is what the difficulty is with trying to understand how to draw the human form. I got I have a lot of people saying, can you please draw the human body? And I, <laughs> I don't understand that question because I've drawn it a hundred times already. And so I guess it's difficult for some to understand that this Ultron character here is the human body. And so that's what I'd like to, you know, for you guys to take from this message today is that Every one of the characters that we've drawn so far, be it Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, uh, Wonder Woman, and so on and so forth, and now Ultron and the Knight in shining armor, and the the uh, we have you know uh, Yoda and Obi Wan Kenobi and a whole bunch of folks. Those are all human beings and characters that have been drawn up from the basic principles of drawing the human form. Once you learn to draw the human form. Then you can draw it over and over and over again. It doesn't require a Paolo drawing to be online to be able to reproduce what I'm doing. You could take this Ultron drawing and modify it, make it into a boxer, make it into, I don't know, a Dark Side, or make it into uh, Optimus Prime. You know, it doesn't really matter. The whole point is how do you basically shape the shape that you want to draw? and then apply the details on top to create your character. And the details you can get from anywhere. You can get them online, you can find a picture of Boba Fett and then draw Boba Fett on top of this pose and it'd be Boba, Boba Fett. So anyway, just to say that you don't need me uh, to draw up all that stuff for you. I'm sure that you can use your smarts and your drawing smarts and figure out how to draw, let's say take this shape and draw something over it instead, right? Now there's a challenge for you. You can try that out. Instead of drawing Ultron here, you can use the basic pose of Ultron and draw something else on top. And hey, share that with me on my Facebook page, Drawing with Paolo Facebook page. All right, so I'm adding some shading here to his body using the stainless steel uh, texture, which has a whole bunch of different gray shades. And over here, uh, the pec muscles need to be much darker on this area because it sort of curves over and the light can't hit that portion. And we'll make this a little bit darker as well as it curves into the center of his chest. That's where usually the pec muscles attach to the sternum. And then we're going to add a bit more shading here. Let me fix my page back there. I always like to layer a little piece of paper underneath my, my drawing so that I'm not destroying the paper underneath my pad, right? So the, I'm drawing on a, on a page and the page underneath might have all these lines if I hadn't placed another used up piece of paper in between them. So that's why my next drawing will not reproduce uh, the drawing that I drew on top of before. Does that make sense? I don't know if I make sense sometimes. <laughs> I'm not sure. You should tell me. Paolo, you're not making sense. All right, so we're going to add these uh, little clips that attaches little body parts together. I suppose that's what the armor's for here. We'll add a nice dark shading here to the abdominal muscle or the chest. And then we'll add these nice tricep lines. And there's like a little fusion line here. Or, or, uh, maybe it's a weld line. And then the biceps. You erase the foundation lines. I'm going to smudge some of this stuff a little bit. Make it softer. And see I'm spreading that graphite so that now uh, the white parts I had left are sort of like a light gray. And later on I'll be able to erase on top of that stuff and make it pure white. But anyway, as white as my page will allow me. That's a really cool technique that we've done with the Terminator before. In the Terminator, we sort of went overboard. We colored the page dark first, and that was pretty cool. And those of you that have succeeded the Terminator drawing, congratulations. It is a very difficult drawing to achieve. I think it's one of the most difficult drawings we've made so far. Although Ultron, you know, isn't all that easy. 
I would say the Halo character is difficult. Terminator is difficult. Predator and Terminator and, and uh, Alien are pretty difficult as well. I think this Ultron ranks up there, but I know some of you will be able to do it. And every one of you can do it if you just stick to it and get the job done. All right, we're going to add a closing part here to his abs. Like that, and then we'll draw his legs in. It'll just be like these lines coming straight out. His legs are sort of apart, and we'll see that in a few seconds. I'm going to draw these divider lines here on either side of his uh, torso. A little black detail here. And then color this in like there too. Add another one this side. All right. Make a nice sort of chromey reflection effect on this end here. There you go. Color all these oblique designs in there. And then we're gonna, I think, make this section a little bit darker. I want to push that back. I want to push it in there. Make it. Like there's a little bit of a recess. And then add nice reflection lines here to his bicep muscle. Which is not a muscle, it's probably just a shape designed in metal, right? That's the idea. I'll color this in here. And then we're gonna smudge lines. I would, I would like to make that paper a little bit darker. Because later on what we're going to do is use our, our eraser, the pencil eraser, and uh, erase nice little white lines in the background that look like they're cables attaching to them from coming out of space somehow. And, and uh, don't forget that this is only the Ultron part, but then we have to draw his, his throne. He's sitting on the throne. So we have to draw that whole section too. So here's one of the first handlebars. It's his uh, right handlebar. We don't see the left one. It's sort of off the page. And he's got this uh, sort of, uh, this is the end of his handlebar here. A nice saucer shape. Curve that back in there. And then uh, his fingers are bent over top like this. Just like that. And we'll put in maybe two fingers that we can fit in there. The third one is sort of hidden beyond the page, so it's cropped out. And let's retrace this line up here and down here. Add a few more darker lines to this neck muscle area here. I like to push that back as well. Make it pop out a little bit more. So as I make the neck darker, the head sort of pops up, right? Comes out of the drawing because it's surrounded by black. Color that part in so the the whole chin and jawline seems to be stepping out of that part now. Make this darker in there too. I'm using a uh, HB pencil. It's a 0 0.7 millimeter. Uh, and what I like about HB, it gives me a great range of tones. I can make a very light gray to a very dark gray. I can't say black because it's not black, it's a charcoal. Uh, but that's what I like about HB. It's soft enough and hard enough. Um, I know a lot of people like to start with a, an H pencil, either H1, H2, or H3 which makes it very, very light. No matter how hard you press, it's still going to be a light line. And then they use the B, B1, B2, B3, which is softer lead, and makes a really dark uh, line. I like this HB. I'm sort of lazy. I hate having to switch pencils over and over again. Um, I like to get my drawings done, and once they're done, they're done, and uh, I don't like going back to them very much. So that's why I tend to do these drawings in one sitting, sit down and do them, and then edit the video. So um, I like the HB pencil as it gives me a wide range of uh, tones in my drawing. And I think that's the success of many of the drawings. Here's his legs, by the way. He's, his legs are spread open, spread apart, sitting like a king on his throne, proud of holding his prize in his hand, which we'll see soon enough. Um, and so uh, I, I find that drawings that are successful will have really nice contrast. And by contrast, I mean that you have nice tones, great shades, from light, light whites or bright whites to dark blacks in the same drawing. It makes it interesting. It makes it a feast for the eye. Uh, I see a lot of drawings. People send me a lot of drawings, and the drawings are sort of flat. And the reason why they're flat, it's all the same tone of gray. So if you can manage to use either different pencils or with the same pencil, apply more pressure or less pressure as you're drawing, 
that will allow you to create a really rich drawing. Lots of tones and uh, beautiful shading make it more realistic in this sense. We're not aiming for, you know, realism or ultra realism. We're just aiming for some realism, make our drawing look more realistic. All right, make this nice and black too. We'll make that part pop out. Same thing on this side and the left side here. Make that design element pop out a little bit more. And you can spend a lot of time uh, tweaking this drawing. But I want to keep my drawings at least within about an hour. Uh, a lot of them are 10 minutes and 15, 20, 30 minutes, but this one will be around 48 minutes or so. Uh, we'll color this part in, make that, make that nice and dark too. So I'm really playing with contrast here. So let's add this throne section. So this is like his first uh, elbow area. What do you call those? The armrests. And it's like a chrome edged armrest. So we need to make this thickness here, which is like a chrome tube, one all the way down. And this one I'm pretty, you know, sure on how I'm going to draw it. So I'm going to draw it in straight, complete lines without using just that little sketchy feeling to it. And create these same separated lines here. This section here will be like brushed metal, sort of used, worn out. And he's sitting on this really cushy material that sort of looks like leather. So this section here will be leather, poofy uh, bits. And then the top is sort of a point, comes back down on this side. And this also has that chrome tubing on either side like this. And comes down on this side too. And the back is also really nice uh, leather, which is strange. You know, why would a robot want to sit in some comfortable leathery chair? But hey, why not? You know, he can choose whatever the heck he wants to sit on. He's Ultron. So we're going to draw in these sort of organic shapes like that back there. And we have to make it sort of pop out the edges, right? Because this is like upholstery, and the upholstery is popping off or, or over the overlapping the metal here on either side, like this. And then we need to color these in. We have to color these parts in with shading. So we're going to start here on the left side and make the dark shadow to his arm underneath here. Make this as dark as possible. And then I'm going to use this sort of chrome reflective effect here, which is just a dark line that'll go all the way down. And I once in a while want to leave just a little bit of a white gap, which will give us that effect of a metal reflection. I like drawing metal; it's a lot of fun. People have said I, I like uh, uh, my these metal metallic drawings are are very well made, and I like I guess it's because I like doing it. I like drawing these things, and so it's it's fun for me. Whereas probably my animal pictures, my animal drawings are maybe less uh, well done because I don't enjoy drawing animals as much. But as an artist um, or a comic book artist or whatever, you have to you know, figure out how to draw everything. And that's where you bring up your models again. You just find images online or in books, magazines, you know, whatever you want. And, and uh, a lot of artists used to cut out books and magazines and whatnot and slap that stuff together into... Uh, sort of a uh, guide or book or comic, you know, whatever. They, they make a, a collage of different images and they go back to that every time they have to draw a character or a certain animal or whatever else. So we're using our gradient technique here. And, and now in this uh, armrest, we're going to add a few like dented metallic parts. Just a lot, a little bit of a few dotted areas and curves here. Add some detail. And we're going to apply that same detail effect to the back portion here. The scary part, and I'll tell you right away, is coloring the background behind his head. That's going to be scary because what may happen is I may lose that head altogether into the background. Um, so we'll start out with doing the outline here and then coloring in the metal chrome bar here, sort of like that. And make this a little bit darker there. And then what I need to do is color in this cushiony area with a gradient. So the bottom here will be darker and then as we work our way up 
we're going to make it lighter and lighter. But closer to the head, I have to be careful that the head doesn't match the color of the background, or else that head will, you know, evidently disappear into the background. So when I'm closer to the head, I need to make it much darker so that the head keeps popping out. So let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Cross our fingers. Make sure this comes out, you know, hey, it's not because I've drawn uh, like thousands of these that I can't make a mistake and I could screw it up. But I'm drawing this. It's not live, but I don't, I don't feel like redoing it in any way, shape, or form. So just have to keep working at it, making it nice and dark around the head. So the head still has, you know, needs to pop up from that background, pop out of the background. So continuing on, continuing on with this cushiony area, making it darker at the bottom and working my way up, making it lighter and lighter as we go. Making it nice and dark here, closer to his head once again. So his head would, you know, show a little bit better here. Ooh. Sometimes drawing is like uh, walking a tightrope. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And you get a lot of happy mistakes, you know, things that happen by, by error and it's like, ooh, that's beautiful. You know, I'm going to keep that in there. And now there's not so happy mistakes where you're sort of like, ah, oh, crap. I gotta start over again. Yeah, that head's not too bad, I think. It's come out okay. We can still see it. I think later on with my uh, eraser, I'm gonna set that up to make it pop out a little bit more. So we're gonna finish this cushiony area here on the right side. It's a gradient that starts from behind and works its way up, and from the bottom too. Very complicated here. I'm sorry, I'm complicating your life, aren't I? Welcome to Drawing 101. Let's make this nice and dark under that arm again. And then we need to do that chromey chrome bar on the side of his chair once more. His throne. I wonder if he'll be riding a throne in the next Avengers movie. So, nice and dark under here too. Make that sort of brushed metal-y effect here. that. Make a little reflection like that. A little bit brighter. Darker under here. A bit longer shadow. And then we're going to treat his uh, right arm here in the same fashion we did his left. With some reflective areas and whatnot. And I would say our drawing is nearly completed. We've got uh, a bit more coloring to do on this arm, and then of course finish up his fingers, and we need to draw his thumb, um, and the, the actual handlebar there. We'll add a few more details to his legs here. And, um, and then we're going to finish off with the background. I would say we have about 10 minutes remaining. So for those of you that have stuck aboard uh, all this time, have stuck along with me, watching this video throughout the whole process, well thank you for staying so long. I really appreciate it. These drawings are meant for you and for you alone. Sounds like the Matrix, doesn't it? I'm so influenceable. Influenceable? Influenced. Influ... Yeah, that. That word. So here's that handlebar. I get easily influenced by movies. Sometimes I feel like I'm an evaded uh, comic book character. I run away from a comic book or something like that. Well, some, some would say so. Some would understand. Those that know me. So let's color in these little finger parts like we did with the uh, left hand, which looks way uh, paler now or less uh, in uh, focus than our right one. That's because I've smudged it somewhat with my hand. That's okay. I like that, that style, I guess. Draw these vertical lines here. Add a bit of shading. To demonstrate this is a tube shape. There you go. Fix my paper here, and then we're going to color in some uh, some leg portion here. Uh, don't forget the legs. Make it uniform with the rest of the body. And we can see here the where the handle the handlebar is attached to this side section here. That sort of like moves up towards us. And then we're going to draw what's in his hand. So. Everybody has been waiting for this portion, right? Who will he be holding in his hand? What does this look like? Hmm? Any ideas? Any ideas? Shut them out. I can hear you. What was that? No. Well, maybe some of you are right. 
let's see. Let's see where this goes. So we're going to add a few more lines. We're going to add, I think I need to make this a little bit wider. There we go. And erase those lines out of there. And pull this line across over here. And we need to work on the top and front part. Bring this line down here and come on back down to the earpiece like that. And then drop back out down this way to the jawline. And then the front has this little divot here for the eye socket, the eyebrow, and then the cheek bone. And then, then there should be a jaw over here, something like this. There we go. Ah, okay, I guess you can see it now, right? Iron Man. He's holding Iron Man's, hopefully it's only his helmet in his hand and not his Tony Stark's head is in there. But I'll leave you guys to decide in your personal drawing story what is inside that helmet. Okay, so you guys can figure that one out. I'm just going to draw his helmet here. So there's a little bit of a hole in there where we can actually color in that in black and we'll add a little bit of a thickness to this earpiece. Like that. Additional circle around the original circle. And he's got these metallic sections. I need more lead. And then add another line here. A little bit of a thickness to it. Like that. There's welded parts. Another line going across this way. Then we're going to color this in nice and dark on the underside, inside of that helmet. Alright, so we're going to use this shape. We're going to color this in with a nice dark tone. Make sure not to lose the fingers in there. And yeah, I think the front will shade that in a little bit too here. There we go. A little point here at the top of his head. And then he's got a little bit of a jawline divot here on the side. Not a jawline, but a, this cheekbone. And then we'll add a little bit of shading on the top. And his eye slit back here. Which now I'm guessing are cameras, right? He doesn't really see out of that helmet, I don't think. In the past, when I used to read Iron Man comic books a while ago, when some of you weren't born yet, um, we could see his eyes through those slits, and all there was was like a little piece of glass. Um, now, those slits produce light, so I'm thinking that, you know, those aren't even, even holes anymore, but he can just see through a camera. I'm, I'm guessing they're cameras, so he can go underwater and whatever else and be bulletproof. There aren't, there aren't any issues. I need to color this earpiece. It's the same color as his helmet. All right, I'm, I'm quite happy with this drawing so far. It's coming along well. I hope you agree with me. And we're going to smudge that up a little bit, smudge the background there with my palm. My palm is super dirty right now, so I'm going to smudge nicely. There we go. Smudge, 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 smudge. And then with my pencil eraser, pencil shaped eraser, this is one long tube eraser. I will add some nice highlights. And because my paper is darkened and dirty, the white will look amazing or like super bright. So I'm going to erase the inside of the mouth. The mouth needs to be super bright because remember he has this illumination coming from the inside. And then everything that has a little bit of white highlight, I will erase into it. So just pull little lines here and there, add a little bit of a reflection here on the shoulder pad. The danger, of course, with this eraser is that every one of those lines you'll erase are sort of the same thickness. So you need to work around that a little bit by making them thicker. But if that's what you want, you know, like in this case, I can make two circles close to one another, but I need to make the first one much bigger as I'm erasing. I can make a thin line, a so-so thin line, but not a very, very thin line because this thing is sort of thick. I could use a white eraser and chop a piece off of it and then make really thin lines, but I don't feel like it right now. <laughs> I'm picky when it comes to drawing. Look at that. Look at those reflections popping right out, right? It's pretty cool. I'm enjoying myself. You know, that's the whole point to drawing is you create your reality and it makes it a lot of fun. You can have some uh, drawing parties, have some friends over and start drawing and then pass the drawing to the left and everybody just draws on each other's drawings and it ends up making this really cool artwork. 
And drawing should be fun. If you're not having fun, then make it fun. Draw stuff that you want to draw. And don't let anybody intimidate you and saying, hey, I love your elephant. And you're sort of like, well, it's a horse. That doesn't matter. As long as you think it's a horse and you're having fun drawing it, that's what counts. And create your world. Be courageous. Be imaginative. Draw whatever the heck you want. You know, videos and, and like YouTube videos and video games are fine and all, but they sort of put your brain on hold. So I'd rather see you guys draw. Yes, I know, my videos are part of it. But my videos are sort of interactive in a sense that you're supposed to be drawing at the same time, right? All right. Tell your parents that my drawing channel is safe. <laughs> All right, pull those lines down across here. Look at these nice reflections, nice highlights. Does a really great effect. Back in university, we'd color a whole page of charcoal and then erase stuff on top to make reflections. And so in this case, we're going to erase these tubes that are coming out of Ultron here. And they're just made of erased lines. And keep them wavy and try not to overlap them. And we need to have them intersect or intercut. Looks pretty cool like that. So that being said, folks, we are nearly done with this Ultron drawing. I really can't wait for the movie. If you get to see it before I, let me know what you thought of it. Remember, you can always go to my Facebook page, Drawing with Paolo Facebook page. My YouTube channel is Paolo Moroni, so look for Paolo Moroni. And it's been a pleasure to draw this Ultron for you. Next drawing will be coming up shortly, I hope. It's the editing that kills me, man. It's the editing that takes a long time. The drawing isn't that bad, but then I have to edit these videos. Um, so that being said, I hope you like it. Just need to erase a few more lines here, add a few more little design aspects. And please share your drawings with me. I like sharing them on my uh, Facebook page. One last thing to do is to sign this drawing to call it done. And guys, thanks for watching Drawing with Paolo. We'll see you next time on another episode. Have a great day.